Good afternoon. My name is Doug Lean. I am Manager of Economic Development for the City of Auburn. And welcome to another edition of our Marketing and Business 101 series that we produce every month. Uh, this month's program is going to be on marketing and promotions. We have two of our local experts that are going to talk to you about marketing and social media and websites and a series of issues that you face as a, a current or startup business or organization. First, I'd like to uh, take a moment and thank Mayor Nancy Backus and the Auburn City Council for the continued financial and backing and support for this type of programming that we offer for our business community. Uh, first, I would like to introduce Dan DeRives, DeVries, I'm sorry so much, uh, that's going to be talking about Marketing 101. Dan? All right, today's a great day to do this. It's hot out, and my air, car air conditioning broke, and uh, so I had to go stop at a Starbucks and get something cool. But, you know, the topic is around ice cream, and, you know, I, and why ice cream? Because we can all relate to ice cream. And I think it's important when you think about marketing, you know, people's eyes sometimes glaze over. But if you think about a product and how to relate to a product that we all use and understand, sometimes it's a little bit easier to to see how, how something that, that you understand, you know, took it to the next level. And, and that's kind of why I based it on, um, you know, on what I call Cherry Garcia and what they did, although I have to admit, um, I do like one of their other flavors better over the year. So um, uh, it's the half-baked that has, that has now sort of caught my interest. But, but let's start in. So while Forrest Gump said life is like a box of chocolates, I say marketing is like a tub of Cherry Garcia. And again, let's look at Ben and Jerry's. Does anyone know the history of Ben and Jerry's, how they started? Well, Ben and Jerry's took a correspondence course uh, in, uh, in how to make ice cream. And they turned it into the business that they have today. So I ended up calling this Marketing 101 a la Cherry Garcia. So I'm an independent uh, marketing consultant. Uh, I go and I work with small businesses on, you know, really how to take their, how to grow their business. And, um, you know, a lot of times when I'll talk to, and I've, uh, in the past, I've worked for Microsoft and I've worked for um, other big companies. So I know how the big boys do it. Um, and I then can apply a lot of that to small businesses. Um, and a lot of times I'll talk to small business and I say, hey, uh, I do marketing. And they say, well, thanks, we already have a website. And so one of the things that's important to understand is marketing is more than advertising. And a lot of times what people will want is they will ask you to put together um, a, mar a marketing plan. Okay, this is not. Okay, and that, let me see if I can go backwards. Yeah, yeah. And that marketing plan is around something called the four Ps. Okay, and so if you go to get a bank loan and they say, hey, what's your marketing plan? These are the things that you're going to ask. And as you put together your own business and think about it, you know, maybe you have some of these together, maybe you don't. You know, how, do I, how do I look at each individual piece and then how do I go forward? So one of the four Ps is product. Okay, what is it that I'm selling? This could be a product or a service. So if I think about you know, Cherry Garcia, right, the product is awesome ice cream. And I'll go into a little more detail on, on, on the product and all these other pieces. Okay, price. Well, how do I price this? Well, this is a premium priced product. Okay, so when you think about your own product, it's like, well, am I pricing high? Am I pricing low? Am I the Walmart? Am I the Nordstrom's? You know, where do I want to be? And so we'll look a little bit about, you know, how do you make that decision and, and how does that relate to some of the other pieces like branding? Promotion, you know, build it and they will come doesn't always, doesn't always work, right? You have to let people know, you know, that you've got this product out there. So your promotion, you know, is on websites, social media, TV, magazines. And this is something that um, Al will talk about a little bit more um, in the second half of this. And then place, okay, is where are you going to sell this? 
You know, sometimes people think, oh, I'll just sell it online. Well, you know, if I look at, at how Ben & Jerry's does it, well, they actually have Ben & Jerry's stores. You can buy it at the grocery stores, and they actually have a catering truck. I don't, I've never seen one around here, but they do have one that will go. So this is sort of the basis of your marketing plan, the product, price, promotion, and place. Okay, so let's talk about product. And again, thinking about the ice cream and understanding maybe how to relate this to, to what you're selling. Okay, so it's fantastic ice cream. I mean, I, I think it's really good ice cream. Okay, so positioning. I mean, this is something that I think a lot of companies really, I think this is the hardest thing that, that, that companies really have to struggle to think about is, is who is their target market? Uh, I teach marketing, uh, taught it at DeVry University. And, and when I do a, a class for, with my students, they all have to do an MBA project. And, and, they all, and they have to come up with a product that they're going to sell. And so I say, well, who is their target audience? And they say, everybody in the world. It's like, no, it's not everybody in the world. Okay? It's, you know, it's something very, very specific. Okay? So who is the target audience? What's their age? What's their demographics? Okay? Is, are you going after someone who, you know, who, who has low money, a lot of money? Are you going after um, you know, women? Are you going after men? Uh, you're going after a Hispanic community, you know. It's, it's really trying to understand who that is. Um, I'm doing a project for a company that does fundraising for schools, okay, and they have multiple target audiences, okay. One of their target audiences is the, is the PTA. Another target market is the principal of the school, all right. Another target market is the, um, <laughs> is, are the teachers, the parents, and actually the students. So, that, so they're different target markets, and you have to sort of market and, and have a different positioning or value to each one of those. But the first thing you have to understand is who is your target market. And then part of the product that you have to think about is how they differ from the competition, right? So we're cool, we're caring, we're responsible. And then out of that comes the Ben and Jerry story, right? So if you look at, you know, there's haagen they're also on a premium. There's Tillamook. They're kind of a little bit on the premium, maybe a little less. And then I think on the right, what you can't see is like a Walmart brand ice cream. So, so low. So how do you compare what do you get by buying theirs versus somebody else's? And again, look at your own products and try and understand what's the differentiation that I have from my product versus yours? Why should I buy mine why should you buy mine versus somebody else's? Okay. Then if you think about a product, well, you may have more than one product. You may have a portfolio of products. You may have a number of things that you sell. Um, some of it comes down to variety. So if I look at Ben & Jerry's, right, they have lots of different flavors. They also have yogurts. And if you go to their website, it's kind of funny. They have what's called a flavor graveyard. So these are flavors that you know people you know used to like. Whatever happened to that? And they they put it in their graveyard. And then how do you package it? Right, that's another type of variety. You know, it comes in pints, bars, cones, and cups. You know, or it's catered. Again, how do you deliver the product or service that your business has? Right? Do you you know can you do sing single serving sizes or can you put it in you know mass quantities? So let's talk about price. Price is, I think, one of the, the hardest things to think about when you're, when you're trying to either start a business or sell because you don't want to go too high, but you don't want to go too low. Um, a lot of people base price on cost, and that's not a good way to go. So this is a, a study that I did about a year ago um, looking at, from Consumer Reports, how Ben & Jerry's rated um, and then what their costs were. So ratings were 98 out of 100, and this was um, customer feedback from Consumer Reports, and they priced it at a dollar per serving. Haagen-Dazs had actually lower ratings. They priced it the same. A company called Talenti, which I had never heard of, uh, their ratings were lower, but they felt that it was a, a higher value, and, and they suggested a dollar, dollar, dollar 19 per serving. And then Kirkland, which was sort of rated the same as Talenti, was 30 cents per serving. So one thing interesting is it's three times, or it's almost four times the price, three to four times the price 
of um, from the Kirkland to the Ben and Jerry's. So someone who's a you know who's a diehard Costco shopper you know may may not see the value in Ben and Jerry's. It's like hey, it's just ice cream. But others may say, hey, it's just ice cream. I only get it once in a while, or ice cream is the most important th in thing in the world to me. Key pricing principles, okay? Price on value, real or perceived. Okay, this is an important one. So Kirkland, right, if you think about the brand, okay, people expect Kirkland to be a low price. Okay. They expect Haagen-Dazs and Ben and & Jerry's to be a high price. Whether it costs more to make it or not, it doesn't matter. What's the perceived value of it? What's the perceived brand of it? And that's why people spend a lot of, a lot of time and energy on branding. Because along with brand, it gives you power to raise your prices. Price should never be based on cost. So if Ben & Jerry's costs the same as Kirkland, I would not suggest to Ben and Jerry's to cut their price, right? Because people are willing to pay the dollar, dollar three, okay? And so why cut the cost, right? If there is a value to it. So price should never be based on cost. If the product you're making costs more to build or the service you're delivering costs more to deliver than you're making, then you shouldn't sell it. Just get out of the business. and find out what your customers are willing to pay. Okay, there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, you can see what your competitors are charging. You know, what are, what are people willing to pay for a competitive product? And if I have a product that's better than my competitor, well, I should be able to charge a little more because there's more value in it. Don't build a better product than your competitor and say, I'll charge less. If you're gonna build a better product than your competitor, say, it's okay to charge more. And ask your customers. You can do customer surveys. You know, you can, you can say, well, what do you think, you know, do you think this is too expensive? You know, or, or talk to customers who have switched brands or gone somewhere else. Was price an issue? And understand it. And offer different ways to consume it. So if they say, well, it's too expensive, find out why. I mean, sometimes they may say, yeah, it's really a lot of money, and I only use half the features. And then say, okay, well, how about if I come up with a, this, how about if I rebundle my product to have less features in it? Okay, sort of have a, a gold product, a, a copper product, and, a, you know, and maybe a platinum product. You know, that's why people have different bundles of pricing. Okay, find out what, what the value is on each of the pieces of your product and then price it accordingly. Promotion. Let the, no let the world know who you are and what you have to offer. Uh, this is a key piece of it, right? I, I love the fact that these guys have a free cone day uh, on April 14th every year. And this is where messaging and positioning comes in. Okay, going back to your product, how do you differentiate your product versus your competitor? Right? So beyond letting them know, hey, here I am, okay, it's, it's what is the value that you deliver? So going back to this client that I'm working on who does, uh, who does fundraising, um, they're a local company. They're, uh, they're, they only work in Washington State, and the value that they provide is that they're local. You know, they, they have their own trucks. They can deliver to each school. All of, their, all of their drivers are bonded and have background checks, so they're able to go into the schools um, versus all their competitors, which are based somewhere in the Midwest, and they charge more shipping. And that's a great mes message, but you have to advertise it. You have to let them know, hey, this is who I am, right? We are local. And so they didn't do that. So that's something that we're working on right now is to, to let people know, hey, we're located, you know, less than 20 miles from where your school district is or 30 miles from where your school district is. So just because you understand what the value is doesn't mean that your customers necessarily understand the value that you're delivering. And that comes out in messaging and positioning. So what's your unique selling proposition or your value proposition? 
and then channels. And again, Al will talk a little bit more about this. You know, it's almost, I'd say most, I used to believe everybody needed a website. I, I don't know that I believe that anymore. I think um, a Facebook page for some businesses is just as good as a website. And, and I think Al, Al can talk more about that than I am. Um, social media, I think that's a must. You have to do some sort of social media. Um, if it's if you're selling B to B, which is business to business, um, I, which is mostly what I do, I use LinkedIn as a, as a form of social media and a form of getting the message out in a form of communication. Um, if I'm selling business to consumer, I probably look at Facebook um, and then all the other things that go along with that, Pinterest and, and just, you know, depending on what you're selling. Word of mouth. I mean, that's a very powerful form of uh, promotion, you know, getting out there, meeting people, mingling. Um, I'm an engineer by background. It, it used to horrify me to do stuff like this and get out and talk to people. And it's like, well, there are people I don't know in this room. I've got to go do it. But, you know, sometimes that's what you got to go do. You know, the chambers give you, um, you know, give you places to, uh, to, to go in and talk to other people. You know, what do you do? What's your product? And um, somebody very smart um, said something to me. They said, it's not, um, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. So sometimes, you know, if I'm working with a client and they say, hey, I'm having an HR problem, I'll, I'll think back and go, you know, I know an HR consultant. Let me call them and see if they can help. So it's really important for this word of mouth to go out there, you know, let people know who you are, and that's how things spread. Advertising um, can be expensive, depending on how you do it. Um, email, you know, I get up first thing in the morning and delete, you know, 25 emails out of my inbox. So I think email is, is a tough one. I think it's important, but it's tough. Um, and then snail mail and flyers, you know, do you read stuff in the mail? Depends on, you know, on... on on what it is that you're selling, and, and then, and, and your promotion needs to be tied with a what you're selling, and b who your target audience is. Okay, if you're selling to a very specific niche, what magazines do they read? Okay, I do a lot of uh, one of my clients does test equipment for the automotive industry, so they call on a lot of companies in the Midwest, and I tell the sales guys when you walk into the front office in the in the lobby look at what magazines are sitting in the lobby. So if it's like, you know, gear manufacturing today, that's where we want to put our advertising dollars. So again, understand who your target market is and advertise to them where they consume that. Um, someone gave me a great example today. Uh, the hunting, the cable channel, the hunting channel. Okay, it doesn't get a broad audience, you know, versus, you know, think of the hunting channel versus, you know, NBC News, right? Very narrow, but you know, 90% of the people who watch it are hunters. And so if you have a hunting product, you know, that's your target audience. You're getting a high percentage of hits. So that's where it's important to understand you know, who it is that you're talking to. And then the last B is place, okay? How to sell or distribute your product service to your customers, okay? So if I look at Ben and Jerry's, right, they actually have stores. I don't know that they have stores around here, um, but they have franchises, okay? You can buy Ben and Jerry's at a grocery store. They have the catering truck. And you can actually get it at Amazon. Uh, you can get eight, eight pints, dry ice pack for those who never want to leave the comfort of their house and just eat a bunch of ice cream and, I guess, get really fat. I don't know. Um, so as a business, what you need to do is you need to create, your, create a marketing plan for yourself. Um, there's a ton of information in here. I mean, you can buy books on marketing and, and sort of go crazy on this, but, but there are marketing plans out there. If you go to Google and just say marketing plan, they'll have a plan and it will touch on a lot of these four Ps and I think can help you get organized. Okay. Again, look at it. You know, what's my product? What am I selling, product or service? What's my price? How am I going to promote it? And what's the place? Um, and then the other thing that's typically in a marketing plan, which I didn't cover today, is something called a SWOT analysis. And this is uh, a good exercise that I do with a lot of my clients: is is to sit and, and look at a you know look at what your strengths and weaknesses are, what your opportunities and threats are. Um, one of the ways uh, I and and so when you think about a strength, the strength is an internal thing. Right? How strong is the company? 
Uh, weaknesses also internal, right? What are the weaknesses of the company? Um, I, I can't ship products on time. I can't, you know, I, I don't have enough salespeople. Um, my products aren't robust enough. They break. Okay, opportunities and threats are external things. Opportunities might be there's a change in the law. Okay, um, there's, um, you know, there's, you know, they change smoking laws, so you know things like vape have become more popular. You know, so so understand what opportunities out there, um, and then threats are also the negative, right? Oh, my competition is is coming in, or there's laws that are saying, well, no, you can't smoke now. So if I'm a cigarette company, I should think about, hmm, well, maybe I I shouldn't promote. You know, I should get out of that business. And then understand market forces. Okay, this is, a, this is a key one. Okay, so if I think about ice cream, well, what are the market forces? Well, you know, 20 years people weren't worrying about gluten-free, no GMOs, sugar-free, and fat-free, and today they are. And so it's led to companies like, you know, Skinny Cow, which is, you know, competition, um, you know, who are going after that market. And so if, if um, <clears throat> you know, if Ben and Jerry's hadn't thought about that, you know, it's like, well, how do we, how do we combat that? And look at a company like Kodak. Okay, Kodak said, well, we don't believe in digital. You know, we don't believe digital cameras will ever take off. You know, everyone will love film, and you know, they don't exist anymore. So that was a market force. Um, so new competitors, new technology, new laws, um, and all of these should be part of your marketing plan. And then the marketing plan also is financials. You know, what, you know, how much am I going to sell? What do I sell each product for? Uh, how much, you know, how, how many products will I sell? How, what's the price per product? That gives me revenue. And then look at revenue and, um, and cost figures. So that's everything you need to know about marketing in about 20 minutes. Okay, questions? Do I take questions? Yeah, Dan, thank you very much. Dan has been a, one of our strong marketing partners here in the, in the Auburn area for some time with Wild Horse Strategies, and Dan's available for a few questions right now. If you have them, go ahead and direct them to him. Um, so one of the things that you said is trying to figure out, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you said was trying to figure out what people will pay for it um, is doing a survey. So right. do you ask them, would you pay fifty nine ninety nine for this service? Or do you leave it blank and say, how much would you pay for the service? Where do you find that people are truthful about the information that you're really trying to get from a survey? Yeah, I don't, I try not to, <laughs> I try not to ask that directly. You can say, at what price is this, is this service too expensive? Or at what price is this product, do you, and there's a number of ways to do it. I, if you give me your card, I can give you those specific questions. But you can ask the questions in a, in a certain sequence of, you know, at what price do you think this is a value? At what price do you think this is, um, you're suspicious because it's too cheap, okay? At, which means you would question quality. At what price do you think you would look at competition because it's too expensive? So if you coach them that way, um, kind of three quarters of the way through a survey, don't like blast them with that, but just kind of lead them up to it. And then you can, you can sort of see in, is, you know, what's their feeling on the pricing? You know, if they say, I would never pay that, that's obvious. I don't think you'll ever get them to fill in the blank. But I have done surveys like that. Um, and, and you may not ask them specifically about your product, but you may say, and I'll give you an example. I, did, we did a, I worked with someone on a project for a dog food company. And it was around raw dog food. So this was frozen. You know, it's like... Um, um, people grade food and vegetables, and um, it was frozen, and, and it would be delivered freeze dried to your house. And so, what we what we asked, we did a couple of survey questions, really categorizing them. How many dogs do you have? Or a dog is a dog just you know a dog that you really don't like, or is a dog you know a family member? You know, how much do you pay for dog food now? Um, do you want to do the best thing for your dog? What's the value that, you know, do, do you feel like there's, you can't do too much for your dog? Okay, and then, then you start asking the pricing questions and look at, um, you know, what would you pay for a premium product that would help your dog live longer? What would you help, you know, what would you, you know, pay for, you know, 
for a product that you know was delivered to your house what's the value to that and then you sort of give them give them some ideas and then you can sort on the audience right those people who say well my dog is just a dog and see what their answers are then you can sort on people who like I love my dog more than I love my kids and sort on their answer okay and then what you get on that is the people who think it's just a dog will only pay a dollar a pound the people who think the dog are better than their kids will pay five dollars a pound and then you have to say to yourself okay who is my target audience is my target audience the people who love their dogs, you know, and then that's what I'm going to go after. I'm going to brand it in this way, and I'm going to charge at this price, <clears throat> where I may take a lower brand or something with that costs me less to produce and say, okay, for those who think a dog is just a dog, A, you're either not my customer, or B, this is, this is the brand name, and it's just a lower, lower price. And it may be even a, a different company. If you look at dog food brands, right, they have completely separate brands, because they don't want to confuse the premium with the lower cost. Did that help? Yeah, great. Okay. Okay. Um, I think at this point, then, we will move forward with um, our next speaker. And if I can move forward here. <coughs> I'd like to introduce um, Al Awadi. I believe I did that one correct. Uh, it's going to talk to us about uh, website development, social media marketing, and probably we'll get into uh, some information in regards to how do you deliver that type of a survey. Uh, this is something that Al has been working on for actually for us here at the City of Auburn. We've been utilizing his services to test drive um, social media marketing and how we can use it to deliver this type of uh, information out to the business community. How can we make the general public and the business community uh, aware of programming, our Thursday night networking event, and that type of stuff. So Al's going to spend some time on the different phases of, of uh, delivery and marketing ideas. Al, thank you. Thank you. All right, so we're going to talk about marketing as well, but we're going to talk about marketing by using the power of the internet. Now, um, like Dan has mentioned, if you need, a, you need a marketing plan, Google it. That's the power of the internet. You gotta go and Google. Google basically is taking over and is replacing Yellow Pages. Nowadays, businesses don't have to be on Yellow Pages anymore. First thing you do, whenever you wanna look for a product, a company, or a service, you go and Google it. And the, um, the phones, smartphones has made it even easier. You can do that while you're driving. Don't do it while you're driving. But you can do it while you're on the go. You walk somewhere, you Google something. You, you walk somewhere, you want to get, get an ice cream, you go and Google and see where it is around you. So that's the power of the internet. Now, we're going to start talking about digital marketing. Now, what is digital marketing? Digital marketing is a combination of activities. So, so for example, search engines like uh, Google, Yahoo, Bing, and so on. You gotta be on those, you gotta be indexed on those. Your website has to be optimized for search engines. Um, you have mobile apps. Nowadays, everyone's got a smartphone. First thing people do is download apps. So a website and an app are both important, but because more people have become using the smartphone nowadays, they download apps. 80% of people nowadays start using apps over websites. And that's where um, app development comes in. Website design. Now, we, we, although 80% of people nowadays start transitioning from, web, from, the, from the PC to the smartphones, we should not neglect websites. Websites are still, are still important. A lot of people still use websites. When someone's in a company they, um, and they research something, they would not use their smartphone. Instead of using their smartphone, they would still use their computer. So that's where websites come in, and websites are very important too. SEO, that's the uh, search engine optimization. Um, and we're going to get into all that in, in more detail. Video production, YouTube. YouTube is the second largest, um, second largest website uh, in the world. People go there for videos. First thing people do is go on YouTube to watch videos, entertainment videos, educational videos, and so on. I myself, which is very funny, I... I never studied marketing at college. I graduated with a computer science degree. But when I graduated, I worked in marketing. I've been in marketing for over 13 years in Europe, Asia, and North America. 
and I worked with, with big companies like Coca-Cola, Emirates Airlines, Michigan State University, Monster Energy Drink, and of course the city of Auburn. And the thing is, I learned marketing. It's a funny story. I learned marketing from a video website. And back then, I don't remember, I don't think YouTube, I knew YouTube back then, but there was something else called Meta Cafe. It was very similar to YouTube where you got all these informative videos on. And that's where I learned it. Went for a job interview, everything that I learned from, started talking to them about it. They thought I was an expert. But from there, I did become an expert while I was at the job. Now, so that's where YouTube is very important, uh, Vimeo and so on. Email marketing. The beauty of email marketing is that everyone's got an email nowadays. Every single person. My baby brother, 13 years old, he's got an e he ha he's got he's he had an email since he was seven years old. Everyone nowadays got, has got an email. However, when you send an email, you want to make sure that you track every email. You want to make sure that people have opened it. You want to make sure that people did not um, delete it or uh, flag it as spam. And now, in order to do that, you have a lot of websites, softwares, and so on. So for example, one of, the, of my favorites, the one I use, is called MailChimp. And what MailChimp does is, you send emails, let's say 1,000 emails, what you do, what it does is it tracks every activity, every person who has opened the email, how long they've been on your, uh, on your email, what did they click on on the email, and whether, um, whether they reopened it and whether uh, they forwarded the email or, and so on. And it also tells you whether you've been flagged as spam so that you know whom to target and whom not to target so that you don't bother people anymore with your emails. Um, content marketing. If you're on Facebook, you're on the internet, LinkedIn, and so on. So not just social, social media, but on the internet in general. First thing you do, f people love to read. So you read a lot of articles. You read a lot of stories. People start getting their news out of social media platforms nowadays, not from um, news channels, news um, TV channels like CNN and so on. People do still do that. But a lot of millennials started going into social media, into the internet, and started reading stuff. Now here's the beauty of content marketing. The way I look at the internet, the internet is like a TV. And every website, every social media platform is like a TV channel. And you are the producer of this TV channel. You are pr the producer of your own show. So what you got to do, you got to make sure that you have a very interesting story, something interesting for people to read. If you are an expert in something, let's say you're an expert in insurance, like David. Right? You talk about insurance. You talk about the benefits of insurance, the different types of insurance. That make it very informative. People love information. But also, make sure that it's very attractive and interesting. There's a story that I heard once known, um, it was called the purple cow. I don't know if anyone heard that term, the purple cow. So there was this guy one day, he, you know, he, he lived in a, in a farm city, farm town, and, you know, and, and he, he, every time he drove to work, he would pass by cows. But then he started getting hypnotized, and he would not see the cows anymore. And then one day, he sees a purple cow, and he, see, he, he spots that purple cow. He's not hypnotized anymore. He sees it. And that purple cow is what you want to be. You want to be something that stands out. You want your story to stand out. And that's where the purple cow comes in. Um, social media. Everyone, everyone's got social media nowadays. If it's not Facebook, it's LinkedIn. If it's not LinkedIn, it's Twitter. If it's not Twitter, it's Instagram. It's always something that people are on. And you've got to be on all of them. You've got to be on, and we're going to come to the part where we're going to explain which one you should be on based on your business and the product and services and the target audience that you're trying to reach. And then branding, of course. You want to brand yourself. When you brand yourself, and that's where pricing comes in. And, and so on. You want to brand yourself as a product or a service that, that, that attracts your target audience. You don't want to be a brand that, that targets everyone. Because that, when you target everyone, you're going to be a, ja uh, a jack of all trades. You don't want to be a jack of all trades. You want to be specialized. You want to target someone specific. And that's where you, you get your target audience. Now, why is it important? Like we mentioned, the, the internet Everyone uses the internet nowadays. Newspapers are dying. TV, millennials don't watch TV anymore. They watch Netflix. They watch uh, YouTube and so on. Read news on the, uh, on the internet. I, I worked as a corporate communication for a big company once, and part of our job was to read newspapers and to see where, that's part of media monitoring. And 
part of what we did is read newspapers every day. No one read hard copy newspapers. The whole department was reading digital newspapers. And that's where, that's where, um, that's why the, the internet is very important. Now, another thing is, the beauty of the internet is that you can also search for something specific you're looking for. So, let's say you're looking for an ice cream product you want to write about, or you want to read about it. Um, you type in on Google, on YouTube, on, on Facebook, and so on, and you get your, the topic that you're looking for. The difference between the internet and, and, and a, a print media is that the print media, they tell you what you, you have to read every day. Whereas on the internet, you're the one who's looking for the information. And that's where the research comes in. You've got to know what the trend is and be part of that trend. Um, and let's, let's have this more of a casual uh, thing. If you guys have any questions, just stop me and uh, ask me any questions you got. Now, going back to uh, targeting your, your audience, you don't want to target everyone. You want to target specific people, and that's, that's where you realize what is right for you. Each social media platform, each search engine, each article, and each website targets a certain segment of the market. And if that segment fits with your target audience, that's where you go. You don't want to be, if, if your target audience is on LinkedIn, you don't want to go and waste a lot of time on Facebook. Now, I'm not saying that you, have, you shouldn't be there because that's building a brand as well. But you, you, should, you should prioritize your efforts based on where your target audience is. And then when it comes to figuring out your, your target audience, there are a lot of methods to do that. But then survey is one of the most important ones and survey history based on your experience and so on. But when you want to go on surveys, that's where the internet comes in as well. There, there are websites and softwares that you can use to, to, um, to, um, to execute some surveys, such as SurveyMonkey. That's the ones, one of the largest in the world right now. And what they do is you have a series of questions, and they do the dirty work for you. You got to pay them, though. That's the. Uh, um, and then, and then the um, social media marketing. Now, the social media marketing is very important. Now, the beauty of social media marketing, again, is like you're having your own TV channel. You're the, you're the producer of your own TV channel. Now, um, but each social media platform not only has your target audience, but also each one functions in a very different way. Facebook functions in a very different way than Twitter, than Instagram, LinkedIn, and so on. Um, so, for example, um, I work with the city of Auburn, I work with Doug, and one of the things that we do is promote the Three No Networking event. We go into, we, we don't use Facebook a lot, Twitter, and so on for that specific activity. What we do is we go on Meetup. Meetup people, our target audience, are on Meetup. They're the ones who are looking for business events, networking events, and so on. So that's where we go. We go where our target audience is. Um, and then we have the search engine optimization. Now, search engine optimization means you want to be always on the top when so on, on Google, YouTube, Bing, and Yahoo when people are looking for you. If I'm looking for an ice cream shop nowadays, first thing I do is go and Google it. Um, Bing is picking up too. Yahoo is about dead right now. <laughs> but what, what that means is, your webs if you have a website, you want to make sure that your website is optimized for, for search engines. So, and, and what that means is using meta tags. And, and that, that's more of a, someone, a programmer would do that for you. What that basically means is that you have to have descriptions on your, on your codes, descriptions that describe every single thing on your website, from titles to the, to the description of the whole website, the, the description of the content of each page, and as well as the images. Google can't read images, but Google will be able to read images if you have a, a description put in into each image on your website. And that's where Google Images comes in. Um, and then blogs. Blogging is very, very important. The beauty of blogging is that people love to read, and people love to get information. And um, it's got a lot of content. So if you are an expert in insurance, for example, write about insurance every day, the advantages of insurance, the advantage of not having insurance, and so on, examples, case studies, and so on. The more content you have, the more Google can categorize you within your 
segment of the market within, within your industry. So if someone's looking for insurance, based on the content of your website and blogs and so on, that's how you get categorized. But also you gotta link everything together. You gotta have social media platform and link that to your website and vice versa. You gotta have backlinks. So all you, 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 you gotta go into other blogs and participate in other blogs and have backlinks, links that hyperlinks that drive people back to your website and so on. And there is a way to track that. It's called, one of my favorite ones that I use is, is called Google Analytics. And what that does, it tells you who has gone into your website, which page of your website, what information they've read on your website, what have they clicked, and where, where did they get onto your website from, whether it's from Facebook, LinkedIn, and so on. All that information is gathered through Google Analytics. And that information is very useful because that's how you can prioritize where to put in your effort more than the other platforms. Um, and then responsive website. Now, nowadays, because everyone's using smartphones, you gotta make sure that your website is responsive on every single device, every screen size. Back in the days, a website was only a website on a PC. Now you got, you got tablets, smartphones, PCs, and so on. And you gotta make sure that your website, your website's layout is compatible with every device and every screen size. And, 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 and the thing about websites is that if, you know, it's, 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 it's very hard for people to convince someone to scroll onto your website. So you gotta make sure when, it's, when, when the layout is done, it's done in such a way that all your information is on the top because you don't wanna lose people. It takes them about two seconds to lose interest on your, in your website if they don't get the information that they're looking for and that's when they open a new tab. And, the, and you know, technology has made it very easy for people to move from one website to another nowadays. So you gotta, you gotta get them right away. And that's where you gotta make sure that your, your layout is structured in such a way that all the information is on the top and you don't have to, you don't have to hope that they would scroll down to read more information. Um, and when, when you talk, uh, when, when, when you blog, when you use social media, website and so on, always make sure that you tell a story. People love to listen to stories. People love stories. And like the purple cow. And, and that's a story that I heard a long time ago, and I can't forget it. It's been years, and I still mention that all the time. And people love that. Tell a story, tell a very interesting story. But when you tell a story, just look at the four Ps, you have the five Ws and an H. And what that means is ask yourself questions. Why, why would someone be interested to read this? Why, you know, where, where should they get the information from? You know, who am I targeting? and so on and so forth. And, you know, and as well as how, how would they implement something, how would they execute something, and so on. All those information, ask yourself all that information, and that, by answering those questions, you're answering your audience's questions. And that's what you need to do. And, and I'm gonna start taking questions now. So I believe that my target audience is elderly. Okay. And I'm a nurse in a hospital. Yeah. I take care of patients. And there's a certain age that you get to and in caring for patients. They know they don't do any of this. They don't want to see it. They don't want to hear it. Now they have family members that will probably do access it. Do it for them. Right. Yeah. But if you wanted to target them, what's the best way to do that in this day and age? Elderly people that don't have smartphones don't access the internet, don't want to do any of that? Well, see, because the internet has become part of everyone's life, as well as elderly people, and the, the reason is because if they wouldn't do it themselves, they would always have someone around them that does it. And for example, I, you know, my, my grandmother, she, you know, she doesn't use the internet. She doesn't have a smartphone. She has uh, one of those old awesome flip phones, which I love so much. But she has people around her. She has me. She's got my mother. She's got my, my uncles and so on. And everyone's, everyone uses the internet. She hears about it so much. So when, during family gatherings, she would hear about different products, about different services, about different places she can go to. But it's because of the information that she got from the people around her. And that's where word of mouth comes in. So although, even if someone doesn't directly use the internet, there's always someone around them that uses the internet and they would, 
get that information through word of mouth. And that's where word of mouth comes in, and that's, what, that's one of the most important pieces of marketing. I would, I would say it's a combi it should be a combination. I, you know, I would never dismiss offline marketing because although online marketing is, is picking up a lot, you still have part, you know, part of the community that still uses offline marketing like newspapers, magazines, TV, and so on. But, but the numbers are reducing. The, the numbers of online users is increasing. And there is going to come a time where everyone is going to be using the internet. Already right now, it's a huge number. And it's always going to pick up. I, I think it's also important to understand what you <coughs> want to say to them. Right? What, you know, I would go down a layer. It's like I want to communicate to elderly people with this information. Because what, it, what the specific information you're trying to give them may also dictate the channel. Right? If it's medical information, well, maybe you want to also send it to their caregivers right? so that then they can communicate it word of mouth. So I, I would, I would dig, dig deeper and understand, again, what, you know, specifically what is it that you're communicating in different messages or different chunks of data you may want to communicate in different manners. And, um, you, know, I, you know, my grandmother, she wanted, you know, I remember when she, she wanted to buy a car. So she had, you know, her, her son would drive her around and she wanted a car. And she would insist on this car. And I, was, I always wondered, like, why did she want this specific car? And it's because she wanted to be cool. It's because of all our young cousins would talk about this car. But they got all that information from the internet, and now she wants to be cool. That's how she ended up buying that car. So although she wasn't directly engaged with the internet, she got that information secondhand. And it, it, it does reach them through the people around them. Uh, thanks, Al. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I have a question about Google Analytics okay. for the website. Okay. Um, we have a provider that uh, runs our website and has been giving me analytics on our website and the traffic. Mm -hmm. Then I called and asked some more detailed questions about trying to track, pinpoint some other information, and they weren't able to provide that. So I started looking into well, how, how can I maybe access that myself? So do you have any experience kind of working? Because I know there's the low level that's free, and then there's like the billion dollar version, which obviously I'm not going to be able to afford it. Do you think it's worth it to explore doing that sort of work um, on your own without any experience? Yeah, you don't need all that information. You don't need all that experience. Google Analytics gives you a code. And if you're a programmer, uh, puts that code on your website on every page. So it depends on how they put that, that code on the website. So the, more, the, the better they do it, the more information you can get. Now, you can get access. It'll give you a username and password. You can access all the information that's theirs with the graphs and everything. You don't need any kind of experience. It takes you like about five minutes to learn all that. So it's, you, I, I think, you know, this is what I think. I think anyone can learn anything about the internet. It doesn't take too long, but it needs persistence. And it needs, it needs you to keep up with the updates because the, the technology, technology changes every day and advances and improves. And you need to keep up with that. As long as you keep up with that, you, you can do it on your own. I don't see, I mean, nowadays with the technology, everything's become so easy. And um, yeah, I think you can do it on your own. All you need is an access user and a password to your Google Analytics account, and you got all the information right there. Right, but uh, and maybe this is a sure. a question I should talk to you about later. It, even accessing the code, and so is that something that I, since someone else runs my website, am I able to access the code to put in that? Yeah, command. Yeah, the code. It's it's a one code that Google Analytics gives it to you, gives. Right, you. and you put it down at the at the bottom, or they have a place where you're on supposed to paste it. Yeah, on the website somewhere on the website. So you put it on the website uh, through coding. And then once it's there, you can access it with no coding experience. But don't I have to have access to my own website somehow? No. It's, you, you, act, you log in into Google. So is that saying so that almost anybody could do that for any website then? Yes. Oh. Yeah. So, so, you, so if you got the username and password to your Google account, you can do that. You can just log in and see all the information there. You don't need to access your own website 
as long as the code is on your website, you can access that information on Google. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? All right. Thank you, Al. Where are we here? So again, I would like to thank our two speakers. And uh, we, again, run these programs every single month. Uh, next month in May, we're going to do something kind of special. On May 26th, uh, we have, uh, we're going to be working with the Chamber of Commerce uh, at Emerald Downs. We're going to be doing a uh, uh, business and hiring expo. Uh, that the Chamber of Commerce is, is heading up. We're going to do our, um, uh, we had planned on doing how to do business with the government, which would be purchasing agents from King County, the state of Washington, and different types of agencies and, and uh, groups, and we will be hosting them at some tables there. So if you have a business product or, or service that you believe that you uh, might want to put in front of uh, government purchasing agents, that type of thing will be there. There's also going to be a, a host of other companies that are uh, buying tables through the chamber to participate. Uh, it's also going to be used as a way for folks looking for work. We'll be able to uh, have an opportunity to sign up looking for jobs, that type of thing. And we also that day are going to host our 3 no networking event at the the, the expo instead of at one of the local small places. So it'll be actually there at the event at the end of it. So we have upcoming uh, in July uh, Exporting 101, which will be uh, talking about if you have a product that you would want to um, export out of the country. We'll have folks there from the state of Washington, from the federal government, from the Export Assistance Office to answer those types of questions. And then in August, Workforce Development. So we have a, this is the balance of our 2016 schedule. Um, I'd like to, at this time, again, thank uh, Nancy Backus, our mayor, and the Auburn City Council for their ongoing support for this programming, and also our partners, the Auburn Downtown Association and the Auburn Chamber of Commerce, for helping promote and uh, produce these programs. Thank you very much for attending, and we'll see, hopefully see you next month.